TypeScript has limits. There are extremely popular feature requests that have been basically asked for since the dawn of TypeScript that the TypeScript team has promised never to implement. We're going to look at five of those. And I think by looking at them, you're going to start to get a fuller picture of what TypeScript really can do and what it can't do. So what's up wizards? Let's get into it. A lot of this stuff we are going to discuss is already covered in my book, especially in chapter 12, which is the weird parts of TypeScript. This took me about 11 months to write. It is completely free and it's available in the description below. I've also been putting out a ton of stuff on my newsletter as well. There's about 40,000 devs on there at the minute. So if you want Want to join again link in the description below let's start by talking about why omit is a little bit weird and why the typescript team won't ever change it what omit does is we can take a user type here for instance any object type and we can basically say okay i want a new version of that type but without one of the properties or multiple of the properties so here we're omitting name from user so we end up with just an object containing id the thing that's weird about this is we can actually change this property name to let's say first name like that and this won't complain and we just end up with id and first name instead surely you'd expect a type error here and it would expect us to put first name instead at which point we just get id again well no omit is actually loose by design and typescript are never going to change it to be stricter the reason for that is there are actually lots of valid use cases for making a loose type. For instance, here we've created a spread type helper here where we're taking in two different objects and basically spreading them like we would in JavaScript. So we have this spread on one side, we have this overwrite me property, we are planning to overwrite that with a number instead of a string and then have a don't overwrite me boolean kind of like grafted on top. So if we look at this example here, we get a really nice type readout of what's being returned from this. We've got our first object here, overwrite me and don't overwrite me. We've got our second type here, which is overwrite me and don't overwrite me. But the key thing to look at is this omit here. What's happening here is that we are taking this first object that we passed in, which is just with overwrite me, and then we're actually omitting two keys from it. So if omit here was actually stricter, then this wouldn't work quite so well. We can actually create our own version of strict omit if we want to, which basically takes in t which we're going to pass to omit anyway and then the key that we're going to omit is basically going to be constrained to key of t this means that if we add in the code we had earlier that if we have id and first name then strict omit is going to give us an error because this should be id or first name so this is the reason that typescript doesn't want to have this strict by default you can construct the stricter version out of the looser version and as we saw before there are valid use cases for a loose omit the next thing typescript will probably never add are negative gated types. Here we've defined a type called any string except click and we're going to use that in a function called add global handler. When we call add global handler we want to basically say when you pass click it's got an error but if you pass any other string it should be fine. This is actually quite hard to represent in TypeScript but I'm going to give it a go. First of all we have to turn this into a generic function adding a type parameter here. We're going to say that t extends string so we're going to constrain it to be a string then we're going to pass that into event here. Now our add global handler function is inferring this big long string let me add something nice like matt and now we can say that if t extends a click then basically we just say never otherwise we pass in uh, not matt but t what this is saying is that the, if the thing we get in the type parameter is click then we're actually going to say never otherwise we're going to return the thing that we get in the type parameter so let's test this out we can pass click inside here and we get an error saying argument of type string not assignable to parameter of type never but this is a pretty brutal way of doing it it kind of only works inside generic context generic functions generic types it would be kind of nice if typescript just had a kind of thing like this which is a string minus a click for instance but the syntax just doesn't exist in typescript i think this was also proposed as well so you've got to kind of patch around it if you want this behavior honestly i don't really know a reason why typescript doesn't implement this other than it's pretty rare that you actually need this mostly you kind of want your types to just be include right i want either this or this or this saying it could be anything except one of these options is much much rarer so i think the fact that this syntax kind of isn't very useful is the reason why it hasn't been considered next up let's talk about nominal types in this example we have absolute paths and relative paths 
And this is a pretty important distinction because passing the wrong type into the wrong function might lead your system to blow up. I've actually made this mistake myself a bunch of times, so I use kind of like a branded nominal type for these in my own repo. The way this would ideally work is you would have like a function accepts absolute path, and then it would be great if we can't pass in relative paths into that accepts absolute path. So one way this could work is if we could just say nominal type absolute path and relative path. This is something they do have in flow. I think they call them opaque types instead. But in TypeScript, you do have to hack around to get it working. We can do this by adding a unique symbol of brand and then a brand type helper. And then our absolute path and relative path can be brand string absolute path. The way this works is we can create basically an object that's kind of never actually going to exist at runtime and kind of append that to this base type of string. This means that absolute path can be passed into anything expecting a string, but it can't be passed into something expecting a relative path because the brand is different. This is kind of clunky though, you know, absolute path and relative path, they can't be just past normal strings. We have to do a little bit of casting to make it work. So we have to say as absolute path and as relative path. But now that that's working, our accepts absolute path is actually erroring properly because the type of brand is incompatible. This is pretty verbose and it's pretty gross, but actually the error that you get is really, really nice. And I have not regretted using these kind of nominal branded types in my own repo. But your mileage may absolutely vary. So why doesn't the TypeScript team go for this? Well, TypeScript is intensely structural. Unlike other nominal type systems, TypeScript is a structural type system, it means it compares two things structurally. TypeScript doesn't care about the name of your object, it's only concerned about if those objects are the right shape. And nominal types, giving your types names kind of goes against that. It just started absolutely chucking it down. It might not be that loud on the mic, but I can basically barely hear myself thinking here. There is thunder and lightning raining down. Did I anger the TypeScript gods or something? Either way, I recorded the last section of this video and the audio was real bad. The two other features that TypeScript won't add are exact types and the throws operator. Exact types break a few assumptions that TypeScript has about its own excess properties. You can read about that in the weird parts of the book down below. And there's been a lot of people for a long time basically calling on TypeScript to document the errors that functions throw. And I'll link below to a massive comment by Ryan Kavanagh explaining why that won't happen. So apologies for the interruption. I'm going to edit this video as fast as I can and then dash inside so that my garden office doesn't get smitten. Smoten? Is it sm smited? Anyway, thanks for sticking around for the weird, weird ending. Uh, I will see you guys very soon.